set about to familiarize myself with what are we talking about. So I come with the enthusiasm of a convert, a man who remembers what an amazing day it was when the first television set came into my neighborhood in the 50s. And I recall how the neighbor who had the television was kind enough to allow the rest of us to gather in his living room, in the small living room at that, and there weren't 3,000 square foot houses where I lived. And the screen was approximately this big, and it was an amazing time. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the internet today. It's not a laptop. It's not a desktop. It's an iPhone 4 and an iPad 2. We set out this morning, driving from Little Rock, first to Star City. I Skyped on this device with someone in my office with the clarity that I have of looking at Mark standing here. And when the lady from the medical business is talking about how they are comfortable in reading their images and telling and knowing that what they're looking in that image is accurate enough for them to do things that affect whether you live or not. And I can look on here with that kind of clarity, or on this with this kind of clarity. And I'm the guy who remembers the first television in the 1950s. This is a very emotional thing for me. My 13-year-old granddaughter takes it in stride. It doesn't have any relevancy to her, but it has a lot to me. My organization, the parent company, Arkansas Capital Corporation, was formed in the mid-1950s. Its background is in business development. It's a private nonprofit development corporation, but we're a private sector organization. So there are roots of being in the private sector. And uh, there are other people who dreamed up the idea about Connect Arkansas. It wasn't something that came from us. But four years ago, when I got the phone call, asking if it were something that we would take on. Uh, I was sharing with someone earlier, this was the answer I gave. Internet, yeah, that's good. We ought to do that. Okay, we'll do it. That was the sum total of the due diligence. The reason for that is, I am above 34 years old, and up until that point in time, my life had been in relation to the internet, it was websites and email. Never in my entire career have I been paid to sit in the front of a computer to make my living. I'm not a techie. I wasn't a techie four years old. I'm not a techie now. But I tell you what I am. The terrible thing about that phone call and the exception of the mission was that I didn't do anything about the internet. And the wonderful thing about that phone call and the accepting the mission was that I didn't know anything about the internet. So I came to the table of blank slate. And I set about to familiarize myself with what are we talking about. So I come with the enthusiasm of a convert. It took me almost two years. But after a series of events and exposures that I, I took advantage of, I got it. I understood it. But I understood it, what does this mean? And you sit here for the last however many minutes and listen to all of the things that are going on in your community that are moving to the internet. <coughs> and that's what I got. The world has moved and continues to move to the internet. Whether Arkansas chooses to go or not. So the fact of the matter is the most logical, the most uh, relative parallel to what we're talking about this year is the advent of electricity. These are life-changing technological innovations, electricity and the internet. And the internet is the biggest since electricity. And ask yourself what your life would be like without electricity. This is the big this is the game changer. This is the real 
able to take advantage of their interest in it. That is very practical. Because ladies and gentlemen, we're in a race. We're in a race with the world. We are not in a race with Mississippi or Texas or Louisiana. We're in a race with the world. And it is a race we cannot afford to lose. This is what the race is all about.
about $7.2 billion available for internet. The vast majority of that money was for infrastructure. We're in the adoption business, the much more amount that we have for certain, the kind of work that we do. But all of the money, regardless <coughs> of what it was, was uh, awarded on a competitive basis. The only thing is, they really didn't tell you on the front end what the criteria was going to be, which made it hard. And a lot of that was because they themselves didn't know what the criteria was going to be. They had done this on the fly. And so uh, we had to come up with things that we thought they would buy into. And there were two rounds. We uh, were not successful in the first round, and uh, but we watched what they seemed to be willing to fund, and so we crafted in the second round a list of items, applications, if you will, that we thought would be of interest to them. And we were one of the very few people that we made the sale. And they were not interested in any way whatsoever in uh, spending much time or money in urban areas. Uh, they were looking for uh, change-making scenarios and people who could make the case that this would be change-making. And they were also looking for areas that were uh, more poverty-related than others. Uh, I, maybe Magnolia has the capita income numbers, but somehow or another we were able to slide them in the umbrella with the rest of the Southeast Arkansas, and that's how we got where we were. But they, uh, our original list that we submitted was a lot bigger than what this shows, and they came back and said, no, 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 and said, we'll talk about this, 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 and this. So that's how this got to be the list that we wound up with. It was essentially what they were willing to do. already knew then we wouldn't get infrastructure dollars, so we were trying to get basic. And to me, and this is just my perception, the federal government really wanted us to apply for bells and whistles from what Columbia County really wanted was, was some basic items. And so, you know, you want something sometimes that you would write this, this big article about, but that really wasn't what our people were telling us. But on the other end of the funding, the things we, we did apply for, we had to have matching funds. So the Magnolia Economic Development was going to put up uh, our matching fund money, which I think on ours would have been about $20,000 had we been awarded uh, the things that we asked for. So uh, we did have Magnolia Economic, because it is an economic development issue in a lot of ways, in a huge way it is, uh, having good um, internet service. And um, it attracts industries here. Sometimes you don't get industries because, you know, I, I like your little phone, but we can't have that here in Magnolia <laughs> to really get 3G. Isn't that right? Come on, Shelby. Yes. Uh, yeah, it works good. It works good, but you know, that was too hard for us. <laughs> but um, anyway, um, MEDC was going to put up uh, the matching funds part of our money, and so uh, as we go forward, we will continue to partner up to try to get the end results that we would all like to have. And um, those types of things. So that's kind of what we'll add on there to the money. Yes, sir. Uh, the strategic plan that you all developed has a whole set of strategies and action steps that you all are in the process of carrying out. Uh, but uh, Sam, could you or Marie just go through that list and share with everybody what are these, because these are significant initiatives that well, the communities piece is the one that you'd have been against in, except it goes a lot deeper than where you are so far when you started the process. But the communities is about bringing awareness. First of all, it's about finding out what your situation is. That's true in any scenario like this. You want to know where do we stand. So the e communities process. Find out where you are, determine what it is you want.
trying to demonstrate relevancy of the internet to an individual's life. And from an individual understanding of the relevancy to themselves, that, that creates a desire or adoption for uh, the internet. And a desire to have the internet or adoption then creates demand. And then demand creates a, a financial incentive for the provider County survey is simply that, a survey of attitudes, uh, availability, uh, statistical data, if you will, uh, that is really our beginning point. Part of the county survey uh, is also about what attitudes are. We're looking to see what the adoption rate is. It's looking to see what the adoption rate is uh, before we get involved and then obviously at some point in time we want to see what the adoption rate is then see how successful it is. Broadband mapping, if you'll notice, every county in the state has that. What that is, is we have people on our staff, the private sector providers, give information to us about where their infrastructure is and what kind of infrastructure it is. And we're able to place that on a map. Did we bring those guys back? Uh, not this one, no. But I can show them where it's on the side. You can go on the Connect website and you can find a map for your county, actually there's several versions of depending on the technology, that tell you where the infrastructure is down to the household street level, household address level, or where the infrastructure is in this county. So that's the mapping process. And we also upstream that information to the federal government, so that the federal government has a map depicting where the infrastructure is throughout the nation. An engineering assessment is when we work with the providers, uh, and gauge the capacities of the equipment, the existing equipment that exists within the county. And out of that, what we find out is what, about what those capacities are, what we have, what kind of financial investment would have to be made in order to upgrade the equipment capacity. <coughs> County website, uh, which we're doing speaks for itself. Uh, computers for kids is we have, I believe, a total of something like 8,500 computers that uh, we have arranged through the Little Rock School System to obtain. These are referred computers uh, that we have available uh, that we're going to provide to uh, students in different areas. Let me caution you about something. Let me, let me tell you the size of that problem. We don't know exactly how many students in the state don't have a computer, but this we do know. There are 400,000 students in Arkansas that are on free or reduced lunch programs. So when we talk about, just cut the number in half and talk about providing a computer to each of those, you're talking about an amount of money that is not within our sizable, sizable problem. Computer training is speaks for itself. I think Andy talked about it. Uh, speaking of, of uh, things that they would not fund, we had uh, in our proposal two large vehicles uh, that uh, had 22 workstations in them. They were totally self-contained. We could take them out in the cornfield somewhere and run an internet class out of it. State of the art. Uh, that wasn't on their list of things they applied to. Other people in other places have used that approach and they've used it very successfully. It works. It's not a minus guy. They just want to be faithful. The folks from the hospital that talked about UAMS telemedicine, actually, we were a conduit for about a million dollars uh, that went to UAMS for them to do a doctor training through the stimulus program that came through Connect Arkansas to them. Fundraising assistance, we have a grant writer that will be on staff uh, fairly soon, and that grant writer is available to assist your county in uh, whatever efforts, whatever interests you have in terms of obtaining grants. And then the last one is 
something called Arkansas source land. The basis of our program, as I told you, is about applications. And ACC, or Arkansas Capital Corporation, as I said, has been in the business development business for over a half century. And what Arkansas source link does is develops a database of all of the resource providers. We talked about the Small Business Development Center here in, in I believe it's at SAU. Develops a, a database that you, a citizen could key in for the, what, we're, what we call a front door. The name of this, by the way, is, is as we said, Arkansas Source Link. This is software that is, is presently being used in ten other states. I think there are nine more that are considering it. And what it is, is taking all of those various resource providers that are out there, that are essentially anonymous to virtually most of you, and creating a database of that, and then through a profile that you fill out on the front end about what it is you're looking for, it then will link you up with the resource that is most likely to be able to provide you what you need. Where did that come from? That came from, uh, I've been doing this 22 years, and we got into this about 10 years ago, looking for ways to eliminate the silos that exist between the various service providers and other programs around the state of Arkansas. So we were looking for ways to make the process more efficient for someone who either is in business or wants to be in business to find what is available in order to help them do what it is they want. That's what the purpose of SourceLink is, to help a would-be or be business person find what they need to do what it is they want to do. And so the initial step is the resources that are here in Arkansas. It may very well be that the answer to who you're looking for is someone who is operating in Washington County. And there was a time when that there wasn't even thought that someone in Washington County could provide a service to you in Columbia County that you need. And that time was when, was before the internet. Now that you have the internet, no longer is that the case. Now that you have the internet and a little thing called Skype or FaceTime, is that no longer the case. So you in Columbia County can have access to any resource provider that is internet savvy, that's operating within the state of Arkansas. We're going to go beyond that, and we will be able to be linked up with people outside the state of Arkansas that provide resources. That's what SourceLink is all about. It's about bringing efficiency in your search for assistance and, and help. Uh, let me just simply say as a citizen, I'm speaking to Connect Arkansas. We have to find ways to operate more efficiently. We cannot afford government the size that it exists today. The internet is part of the answer to that problem. We can't afford that for someone to have to drive 30, 40, 50 miles, or 75 miles, or 100 miles to have a face-to-face -face conversation with someone about how do I start a business. The fact of the matter is, folks, if you can read, you can get 90% of what you need to know about how to start a business before you ever go see my friend at the SPDC. Then go see this guy at the SPDC. And it will be a much more productive time for the SPDC person and a much more productive time for you. And I believe the SPDC folks at Little Rock and Scott time will come when that's how you will deal with that person through Skype. Every person in my company can Skype 